10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 1, 1, 1. A mistress! There's a new Patreon review due! <gasps> Oh my lord, I had no idea. That's totally not why I was standing here waiting for. Oh fucking hell no! Okay. It was totally because I love you and I was standing here waiting for you to arrive because I enjoy your company so fucking much! Uh, okay, but I still have a job to do. You are a scion of joy who brings nothing but light into my decrepit life! Okay, enough sarcasm. What? That wasn't sarcasm! I can show you actual sarcasm! But I won't, because I love you too much. Okay, what film do you want to do? What about surfing Nazis? I feel like insulting dipshits. This is another trauma release, though not a trauma movie. They didn't make this, they just saw the concept and ejaculated into someone's face until they handed over the rights. Here's the setup in the far off year of 1990 something, there was a huge earthquake in California. This turned much of the state into a Mad Max like Lawless Wasteland. Unfortunately, the only way the state's actually changed is there's now gangs who surf. The sort of gimmick the general public could easily fuck up by not going to the beach. One of these gangs is the titular Surf Nazis, a group of idiots who dress up like the Third Reich after a brain hemorrhage. They strike me as more like a group of average murderous shitheads who masturbated into 120 piles of rare pepes and got a bit carried away, rather than people with actual designs on genocide and worldwide domination. Regardless, I'm in favour of them getting punched. Especially when it's done by an angry black woman out for revenge. The Surf Nazis all have real Nazi names too, like Adolf, Ava, Mengele, Brutus, Hook, and Smeg. It's a pity that none of them are called Goebbels, then I could have made a Surf Nazis Must Diet joke. Uh, the trauma intro, always like going home, if home is a rundown bowling alley in the arse end in New Jersey. A film by the Institute. You know, most mental hospitals just bring in paints. We open in a speech by a mostly off-screen asshole and some enthralled Nazi punks. Hopefully they'll soon fuck off. Okay, they either badly misplace their widescreen bars, or that's a desperate attempt to distract us from the boom mic. Hey, Minion, come here. Yes, Mistress? I have a very important job for you. Oh. And that's to find out if the audience remembers the Memory Run Review! Oh. <laughs> Tasty. Who rules the beaches? Surfers rule! Who rules the surfers? This is basically the intro to the purge. Anyway, in Trauma's world, this is an average kid's film. Trauma's world is fucking awesome. My guess is collects had happened and literally no one noticed. Among those who had their homes destroyed is Mrs. Washington and her son Leroy. Yes, Peter and John, it is very original. Oh, Don Wildsmith as opposed to Don Domestic Smith. So many names, so little talent. Smeg's mom, a classic role. I think Olivier played her once. When they don't feel like chucking credits at us, they cross-cut between the Surf Nazis and Mrs. Washington moving into a nursing home. The implication is that she somehow destroyed the house in the time warp that turned her into an old woman trapped in the body of a middle-aged woman. You must be Eleanor! 
Mrs. Washington to you, honey, and I ain't deaf. You're not old either. I can only assume that since 30 is ancient in California, a 40 year old like her is the living dead. Still, neo Nazi or not, Ava's right about Mangala. Mangala's an asshole, remember that. Other than literally everything else, the biggest thing dating this film is Adolf himself. Nowadays, he'd be less an evil young David Niven and more like a bitter failed RuPaul's Drag Race contestant with a flock of seagulls haircut. Mangala, the surf Nazi's resident genius, meaning he can be outsmarted by two eight-year-olds rather than one, has made Hook a hook. Kinda big, isn't it? Depends, are you planning on playing lacrosse with it? What did they call him for the brief moment before Mangala finished the hook? Pre-hook? Hook in progress? Stump? Mrs. Washington's brought all the important stuff, miniature American flags, and her copy of the New American Bible. It's the version that includes the words y'all and folks. I'd question her positioning of that flag, but... I ask you, what's more American than looking at yourself and seeing a flag? <laughs> Ralph Steadman will have a job creating title cards. Right away, we can see the devastation that was wrought by the earthquake. They've been reduced to drilling for Botox, and the cars look like doorstops. One word describes the state of the beaches. Anarchy. I can see the beaches from here, and two words describe what's happening. Fuck and all. This is Leroy, Mrs. Washington's son. He's in charge while the drilling, but that's what is important as nuances to this film. What's this I hear about trouble down here? Well, there's been trouble at Mills, sir. One of the crossbeams got ice skew on the treadle. Nazis, sir. Nazis? I hate these guys. The surf Nazi's van looks like the face of a carnivorous ninja turtle. It's more impressive than the gang themselves, they look like an idiot city of Nazis, functionally identical to the actual Nazis, but these ones were designed by a new wave band. You're beautiful when you're angry, Adolf. He never rocks me like that, Amadeus. Hook's engaging in the time-honored activity of hanging out in a rooftop and making cameras move. You know, typical Nazi shit. This film is actually much more boring than any film called Surf Nazis Must Die has any right to be. Expect to daydream about Woody Guthrie and or the dead Kennedys arriving to kill them at least three times while you watch it. Hey Brutus, surf that! That's only surfing and very specialist porn. And that's a van! And an overlong unpacking scene! So far, there's been a lack of surf show and way too much surf tale. When they do finally get to some surfing, it's so fucking momentous, the whole cast just sits on the beach watching the footage. Is the footage at least interesting? Fuck no. Hang ten. Hang nine, 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 nine! Over at the retirement home, Mrs. Washington's rebelling against the stuffy rules of staff members who are likely older than she is. Hi. Your son forgot to give you these, but remember, there is no gambling, because it isn't nice. Five cards stood. We gonna have some fun. Oh, why couldn't they have told her not to do something really fun, like start a gerontophilic prostitution ring? Gotta put some life in you bitches. <laughs> I am the Fuhrer of the new beach. Is it a gay side character in a bad Mexican soap opera? I am the Fuhrer of the new beach. As you know, the local council kicked us out of the last beach we hung out at. And New Beach? One of the third beach, or are you worried the audience would be dumb enough to think there's a sequel? Hook interrupts the speech, and Adolf gets so pissed off he wants to crush his clockwork oranges. Adolf sent invitations to their beach gangs to come to his summit, because he intends to kill them all and become the ruler of all the beaches in the area. But still, beaches, hotbeds for riches, when there's only like six of them in the gang, so that's one Nazi a beach if they're lucky. So worst case scenario for them isn't people avoiding the beaches, making this whole thing pointless. It's people going to the beach, doing simple math, and realizing they outnumber the one person Adolf left on the beach. If he's not in a break. The only reason this plan doesn't instantly fail is because this film is too cheap to afford reality. Yeah, very big business. Holy shit, it's like a Zack Snyder shot from before there was a Zack Snyder. The other gangs are arriving for the summit. Among them are the Designer Wave, aka the Designer... Gave. The Samurai Surfers, aka Surf Ninjas Must Die, and the Pipeliners, aka Billy Mays and his Hollow Notes tribute band. Hi, I'm a vampire now. His Ubermensch costume there is looking a little unter. Well, this is impressive, it looks less Nuremberg and more... 
they need a new room, Berg. It's like they're trying for the Will called Will and his LARPer friends. What's this all about, Kraut? Good question, ZZ. This is essentially a surf Nazi's fresher's fair. You can join them in putting on the Reich, or you can die. And if you do join them, you can die slightly later because the film's not called Surf Nazis Must Live Long Fulfilling Lives. Sand. Now we have even more of it. We're not getting the most out of it. Well, yeah, you've been bagging it and taking up its natural habitat. Forget about individual colors. Forget about gang territory. We need to pull together under the side of the swastika. I think he's offering them a gang bang. You couldn't handle the power! You're not convincing me I'm wrong. You couldn't handle the power! No, power handler, you! Bah! I deride your power handling abilities! Uh, he's only got one harpoon left. I don't care how bad you are at counting. You should realize there's more than one of you. Regardless, they're all working for the Nazis now. Any more heroes? Over at the retirement home, the mean head nurse is hanging around with what looks like Larry David in a woman's suit. Mrs. Washington's making herself at home by refusing to be secretly drugged and chopping down a branch that's ruining her view. Will these plots meet? Yes, and one will kill the other. The surf Nazis are preparing for war by having Mangala do cruel and inhuman experiments on innocent surfboards. This is real beauty. Switchboard. Have you any idea how much it would cost to do a scene that's awesome enough to be worthy of a stab board? Do you have someone riding a wave over the beach and into someone's chest? Neither do I, but sadly it's probably a fuckload more than they had to make this. Small children are threatening to fist Adolf. It's appropriate because he looks like a badly made dildo. Beach crime has skyrocketed. They stole on this stuff, that bin, and this random woman's watermelon. Okay, now he looks like a slightly better made dildo. Well, he's part of me is wondering if this film is a prophecy about Milo Yiannopoulos' post-Patreon career. I actually love the guy's performance as Adolf. It's like he rolled a die each morning to decide how gay he'd be in that day's scenes. Over at the local area's finest ski lodge slash bondage club slash film location, ZZ, aka the non-surfing guy who's not in a gang and has nothing to do with most of the plot, is having an important meeting with some tits. When are you going to take me on a ride on your hot rod? Well, she took her ZZ top off. Ava's arrived, showing off her wedge of cheese haircut. She and the boys are going to take a cut from ZZ's earnings, because that's a deal that exists now. When he falls short, she threatens to make him like she likes all of her man. Minus a testicle. Listen, hey. back off! <sighs> More Franklins by Monday. Hmm. And I thought it was all about the Benjamins. Got it. Shithead. It has got you well trained. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He asks me to jump and I say off what ledge. What? No one wants to slam dance? Mangala seems to really want to change his nickname to the Angel of Death for it to play Richard III. I think this is an alternate reality where Kyle Reese failed in 1984 and Sarah Connor was killed, and he's just kind of bumming around until Judgment Day, fucking everyone he can in the meantime in the hope of accidentally creating another John Connor. All they understand is force. Freudian psychology, actually. All little boys want to be dominated. Not all little boys, Mangala. At least I don't have your case of penis in If this was a better film, I'd expect a full-on cock sword fight between those two. Out of all the cast, Mangle is probably the most noteworthy. He's played by Michael Sonia and has appeared in some of the worst films ever made with the best fucking titles. Shit like Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, Terror from the Clit, Nightmare Sisters, Grindsploitation, Rollerblade Warriors, Taken by Force, and of course, my Surf Nazis Must Die review which is a special kind of awful. Back on the beach, everyone's hanging out to depressing synth music. Oh my god! My binoculars have been replaced by grainy stock footage! Oh no, sorry, that's just the wall. Samurai, sir! 
I believe they prefer to be called Samurai Surfer Humans. At all figures, they're making the place look untidy by roaming around out there. So he sends his men out to battle them on the waves because the power of the gimmick demands it. He's not going though, he has better things to do like play Ava like a musical instrument. <laughs> You know, I do not think that any jokes I could come up with could do that scene justice, so... Let's just have some fun! Smeg, like all dim-witted hangers-on to greasy black-haired weirdos and the inexplicable girlfriends they have, really likes to Baywatch, you guys! <laughs> Three's a crowd, Smeg! Turns out Adolf is really good at fucking, but also finishes really fast. A true master race, if you will. This is the greatest argument for Olympic figure surfing. Unfortunately, it's meant to be an action scene. <laughs> Surf saxophonist must die! So they finally worked out that they don't have the money or imagination for what they were trying to do, and instead move the action to the land, where they can fail on familiar territory. Mangala surfboards are even worse weapon on land than it is in the ocean. Anyway, the fight's technically a draw, but the samurai surfers leave their boards behind, so I think the Nazis might have won this on points. I'll see you tomorrow, Mama. You try to have some mercy on these folks here. <laughs> Only the good Lord shows mercy, son. <laughs> Mama, I'm confused. Why is this heartfelt family drama surgically attached to the surf Nazi nonsense? Because, my boy, some crazy white man can't tell his good ideas from his bad ones. Honestly, this film would probably be greatly improved if Leroy and Mrs. Washington were the leads. He uses his freakishly large ass to investigate the surf Nazis, while she raises hell until he gets killed and then she does the revenge thing. Oops. Spoilers. If they were the leads, they could have spent the budget on shorter and more impressive scenes of the Nazis being evil. Anyway, back to the beach, uh, apparently a nuclear winter started, and Leroy stopped a robbery, making a short-lived, but still lifelong enemy. Leroy's also apparently in a steru. Cool. Why are there people on the beach in this weather? Them at the back. How are they sunbathing? Meh. Maybe they all hope the surf Nazis got lost in the fog. Don't I know you? Probably not. He was only in seven things, and his character only had a name in two of them. I'm really wondering about Leroy's Thor's hammer pendant. Is that some kind of a point about the co-option of Norse religion by white supremacists? Or is the costumer too dumb to realize he hadn't used a cross? You look kind of like a white man I used to know. Except you fell down the chimney. Or maybe Adolf's just angry that Leroy's a real Viking and he's just a poser. Now, I give this film crap for being ridiculous, for being pretty shit, and you know what else, you've been watching the review, but it has one thing going for it. It clearly aimed for cult movie trash status, but parts of it managed to hit serious drama by accident. The editing around Leroy's death is probably the best example. The cut between him, faced with the Nazis, and a blurred figure slowly walking towards the camera. It's his mother, here to identify his body. This little bit doesn't just belong in a better film. It belongs in a really good one. Is this your son? Yes. Is this your ADR? Yes. And then we have our stunned reaction intercut with him running off into the waves, never to be seen again. Why, Jesus? He's all I had left in the world. Except for that casket, I mean. I was intending on dying soon. Now I need to buy another one. The whole film is filmed in a much slower way than you'd expect from the title. Usually I'd call that incompetence in directing or editing, but with this I get the feeling they took this amazing exploitation concept and accidentally filmed it like a slow, ponderous drama. Take this shot, for instance. It's almost two minutes of Adolf strutting into an unexpectedly well-composed shot of a ruin and having a fight with Mangala but it somehow looks more like something from a Katsi film than the cheap bit of post-apocalyptic nonsense it is. It's kind of like how See Me Dance is a drama that's accidentally a horror film filmed like a sitcom. I really can't show you enough to get this sort of thing across. You need to watch the film to see it for yourself. 
Weirdly, well, this whole thing is weird, but weirdly, the thing this most reminds me of is Beyond the Black Rainbow. But if instead of deliberately trying to evoke a dreamlike state, it was a result of getting high and watching the Road Warrior in half speed. Mangala! I want to talk to you! Mangala! I want to know why the swastika looks like it was weaved by a drug addled giant spider! No! Where are the approvals of your team? Where are they fucking stars? They're pretty hard to understand because of the shouting and the echoes, but that's accurate to the real life Nazis. You ever seen Trying for the Will? It's like they were speaking a whole other language. Do you know who Mangala was, man? Do you know? The fucking exterminating angel! And you named yourself after Adult Quitler! Take that back, you angel of insolence! You angel of dick! <laughs> anyway, time to learn about Smeg's home life. Aren't we so lucky? Gregory! Take that wetsuit off. No way, Adolf is expecting me. Praise kick, Mom! Adolf? Good God, Gregory, is that what that snotty Ricky Johnson calls himself now? Mom. You're not going back to them. They're cool. We're the gnarliest game around, Mom. Yeah, right. And don't call me Mom. I'm your dad. What? Well, that shut him up. It's reverse psychology. Seeing as she's literally called Smeg's mom, I think she's tried to do that to the whole film. And don't be late for dinner. Oh, he won't. She's cooking his favorite. Briskak. <laughs> anyway, Adolf. AK Evil Freddie Mercury is causing so much heat at a local pawn shop that you should really call Mr. Fahrenheit. I bring you a ton of easily resellable merchandise every day. Just offload it faster. It just doesn't work like that. Then lower your bottom end. Why? Oh, I was an economics major. Does every version of Hitler fuck up a university in a different subject? As you can see, the most threatening thing he's ever done is tell a guy that he won't sleep with him. I'm telling you, we're the hottest gang on the beach. You're still an asshole, Smeg. There was a nigger who tried to stop the Nazi wave. He ain't around no more. Nazi wave? You mean the social experiment in a high school in the 60s where Bruce Davison accidentally became Hitler? No, that's the only time a bunch of Americans embraced fascism and no one got killed. There was a nigger who tried to stop the Nazi wave. He ain't around no more. He's talking white trash! Yeah, sounds like a rave in a washing machine. Adolf and Ava have been, stay with me on this, surfing. They then somehow manage to walk up the beach and sit next to their spare boards without noticing that someone set them on fire. And then it takes Adolf about five hours to react. Stop! Meaning that the Nazis are going to blitzkrieg every other motherfucker who sets foot in a beach. Up to and including innocent fish. Or a man. Honestly, I thought they'd already declared war on the other gangs but half an hour ago. Shows a little I know, what with my watching of the film. Larry, Larry, who the hell got this to ya? Oh, jeez! Oh no, not the seas! Not the seas! Ah! Hey, Jesus! Where do you think you're going? Surfing, brother. Surfing. Nobody surfs here but the Nazis. Guys, how the fuck are you expecting people to rob the sure to be theologically fascinating, Jesus, the probably gay hippie, if you won't even let him near the beach. There's no room for Jesus on the new beach. Mangala, you son of a beach. Ooh, you kiss your mother with that mouth? That's our final solution. Final solution to what? That doesn't make any sense. You were planning on taking control of the beach to make money. How can you make money if you eat visitors before they can give you any money? Even if your slightly foreshadowed but still sudden vampirism made any sense, it still wouldn't be a final solution because eating people who go to the beach is an ongoing process. It's our final solution. I get that you're dedicated to a gimmick, but please wait until you're doing something final before saying that.
Uh oh, it's the beach stag fire. Any bets? It's those low down, off screen Jewish surfers who never appear in the film that did that. They're all too innocent for their own good. Anyway, the other gangs have decided to have another summit to see if anyone will rid them of these turbulent Nazis. Adolf plays by a whole new set of rules. Hardcore. He plays dirty. He tweets out fake news. Adolf plays by a whole new set of rules. Hardcore. He plays dirty. It's totally unfair, man. He's criminaling semi-competently. I mean, he's not yet got the hang of robbing people of valuable shit before murdering them, but he's a quick learner. He might figure it out before he retires. We need a plan. Beyond trying to shave your head with the blunt end of a knife, you mean? Weird to say, but this film is almost an aesthetic level relaxing. Like this silent 12 second shot of Hook on a Roof. The wait's 8 seconds before he does anything. Well, that was anticlimactic. I see the camera is searching for something happening. Unfortunately, all it finds is Hook bitching about Mangala's substandard Hook creation on his hand. He didn't. Mangala didn't build him. I think. Oh man, that hook was you. It's a piece of shit. Well then try this. Oh, that's great. Hey, it'll be perfect if you ever realize you're not making any money enough to start hoeing. You might have noticed that Hook clearly has a hand and is spending his time fisting his namesake. I'll give the film the benefit of the doubt and assume that's not a special effects failure and he's just very silly. Anyway, at this point, even Mrs. Washington's bored of everything and has decided to put the rest of the film out of her misery. Afternoon. Help you, ma'am? We got pipes here, we got tobacco here, all kind of smoking accessories. If you wanted to suck a pipe, she said just hacksaw Jim Duggan and the rest of the pipe cleaners. Winders. Liners. Whatever. And a pipe from a pawn shop? Ew. I wanna buy a gun. Got this here. Ladies Saturday Night Special. A lady's gun? I'm too pissed off to be a lady. But I'm more interested in something that'll take the head off a honky at 20 paces. Does it have to work only on honkies? Because I don't think the Nation of Islam makes guns. But he gives her a Walther, but her inner rage, and the face that shows it, tells him that she needs more. I can get you shotguns, I can get you mace. Hell, I could get you a phase plasma rifle in the 40 watt range. I'm a human bloodhound hybrid slash NPC shopkeeper. I can get you whatever you need. Want to buy an orange man bad t-shirt? Grenades. Okay, yeah, that might be better for killing people. Well, that looks like an experimental theater piece for children. Didn't expect that. Zeke, little rats. Hey man, we ain't the rats no more. Oh, really? Yeah, now we're the Earth Surfers, riders of the hard wave. You're the cast of a children's production of Starlet Express and you know it. Pretty radical, huh? Something's gonna go down real soon. Damn right. Soon as Mrs. Washington finishes reading the Bible. Kind of looks like she's going to shoot the first passage she doesn't agree with. Forgive me, Jesus, for what I'm about to do, and if you don't like it, then to hell with you. Over at Smeg's house, his mum's forgotten that he's 24. Once she's gone, he desperately tries to warn the other surf Nazis, but the five foot of fury slowly heading their way. You see, ever since her run-in with the 21st century schizoid boy, he's not seen the other Nazis. Now, I don't know about the other Nazis, but that's certainly news to the audience. Hold it, Smeg. Mom, I'm not grounded. I'm all too loud outside. What's this? I thought we got rid of all this Adolf crap. But, Mom, it's his camp. Jeez. Come on. Back. Ah, Get in. Ah. Go on. Stop virtue signaling, Mom. Do I have to put bars on this window? Lady, you might want to reconsider. Just think of the terrible things he might do if he doesn't die with the rest of the Nazis. Like producing Alone in the Dark too, Which he did. For real. I'm not fucking kidding. There are fates worse than death. Personally, I want to know why he felt the need to write Adolf a letter. He's leaving the house. He could have just told him. Eh, maybe he's more officious than he looks and he's warnings in writing. In the morning, we see the samurai surfers dancing to what sounds like a space oddity covered in by coil. The other gangs are preparing for all out war in their own ways, the designer waves riling themselves up by being in a very unfashionable shot, while the pipeliners are trying to work out what the fuck their gimmick actually is, besides facial hair and probably having cocks. 
Oh yeah, I fucked that beach so hard. Okay, now try to keep track of the cascading logic in the gang's attack. They all hang around their very specialized locations, then they all drive off. Clever, they're planning on doing the first smart thing I'll film and just run the Nazis over. But the samurai surfers manage to fuck it up by attacking via the sea. Probably so they can reuse this footage from before. By the way, there's so much surf stock footage here that I could use it as a censor box next time I review a porno where people piss on each other. And yes, I said next time because there's always a fucking next time. Anyway, the samurai surfers attack via sea, which would be fine except these alleged martial artists literally catch them sleeping and still manage to lose. <laughs> Apparently the Nazis' fabled Oscar the Grouch maneuver was just too much for them. Shit! Yeah, who came out of nowhere? Nah, who got a brief moment of clarity and was in a bin? They're snatching defeat from the jaws of victory, and then there's breaking victory's jaw when you get too close to it. Shit! Yeah. If only we're in some position to do something! Anyway, the samurai surfer's pearls have been well and truly harbored. Anyway, for the third time, I think, the Nazis declare all at war on the other gangs, and this time they're serious. They start off by attacking the designer wave, who weren't even involved in the attack. I mean, their car never arrived. I'll give the Nazis the benefit of the doubt and assume they just have a thing for slaughtering trios of gay men. A pink triangle, if you will. So in a great victory in the war against stereotypes, the designer wave are better at martial arts than the samurai surfers. <laughs> But the Nazis have two important advantages. A, there's more than three of them. And B, the things the Nazis stick into their men are much pointier. Oh, hell, mangle, yeah. Over at the Nazis' base, the locals are being outacted by the set decoration. And the pipe grinders, they have no discernible gimmicks, are sure to continue the proud server tradition of going it alone and eventually getting killed because of it. But first... Oof! Faced! Well, it's good that California's craft beer standards didn't fall with the rest of civilization. Okay, they've already got more points than the other two gangs. Brutus the barbecued beefcake is down, failed by some kind of final solution. Now, how are they gonna do against the rest of the gang? I think they all died of shock after that moment of blinding competence. Mangala, you don't know where that blood's been! And that looks like it would do more damage to Hook's teeth in the guy's throat. In the crazy, upside-down, topsy-turvy world of the alt-right, the leader betrays Brutus. <laughs> hey, movie, why didn't you just call him Rome? He's clearly some kind of queer, and he's killed by Adolf, and he wasn't of any further use. Hey, no! You're useless to me now, Brutus. Or was that too much like history? I finally worked out the perfect way to describe this film's direction. You know method acting when someone doesn't really leave their character until the film's finished? Well, I think the director of this method directed and convinced himself it was Ingmar Bergman. They all look really depressed for a bunch of people who just worked out how to get rid of bodies and have a meal at the same time. What was your worst moment ever, Hook? That'll be when you bit off my hand, sir. Either that or the Ludovico treatment. That stung like a beach. Mangala? Ah, oh, they're all bad, man. Joseph Mangala, angel of existential depression. What follows is a minute of long shots of stuff with only the soundtrack to protect us. Though, in fairness, it is a decent soundtrack. We have the sea, the sea again, a bunch of water, roughly sea-shaped, and then some dunes for change of pace. Why do people find this film boring again? At least until this point, because from now on, Mrs. Washington's here to kick ass and advertise Milk and Magnesia. And she hasn't got the commercial job with Milk and Magnesia yet. You sure left Cherry yesterday. I did? When? When you were constipated. Boom! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> my neck! My neck! Oh, I'm hurt! Mangala is being promoted to Angel of Dead, and the artwork's trying to reveal a subtle truth about Adolf, and the final chase begins. It involves Mrs. Washington returning home because she forgot her gun, but she probably realized how useless the Nazis were, so no biggie. 
While there, she takes the chance to terrify the other young white person who's been ruining her life. I've been pushed too far. I got nothing left but payback. You mess with me and your dead meat with us. <laughs> You need some value nursing! She, Adolf and Ava then swap vehicles, because when you're juggling this much dynamic action, it's hard to keep track of what characters are driving what. Anyway, the chase takes them through an oil tank graveyard. And believe it or not, but an angry, allegedly elderly woman, who's as wide as she is tall, isn't the world's stealthiest predator. And, you know, perhaps you shouldn't have filled your gun with laser tag cartridges. I know it was you, Adolf. I've been watching. I had nothing to do but watch the movie for vast swathes of it. I'm your worst fucking nightmare. You hear me? My Mark Polonek has it out for you, sucker! Remember the grenade? Yeah, that was about five minutes ago. He's evil, not an amnesiac. Remember my son, Leroy? You hear me? You hear me, Israel? Leroy's mama! Oh my god, he just ran in. <laughs> Check out the masters race away from her as fast as they can. Wait, why are they the ocean now? You can't have an overlong chase scene with inexplicable vehicle changes that heads inland to a fucking... whatever the fuck this is. And then seconds later, you're at the beach. Well, you can because you are, but fuck you for doing it! Which way they go? Adolf and Ava are stolen boards, so how is she gonna catch up and kill the hell out of them? Speedboat. This is why they couldn't afford a plot. They rented a speedboat. It's like how Police Academy 4 wasted the money it could have used on jokes on renting some balloons. Jesus Christ, movie, why couldn't you use part of the budget on editing? This shot's over 20 seconds long! <laughs> Crimson Tide 2, The Quickening. Never bring a surfboard to a speedboat race. Anyway, Adolf has a ninja star up his sleeve and into the guy driving the boat's back. Oh. I love how she tries to work out if she actually gives a crap about him or not, and eventually decides he was just a tool for her vengeance. Which is coming right up. <laughs> Revenge is a dish best served, peppered with white-hot lead. Taste some of Mama's home cooking, Adolf! What does justice taste like, huh? What does it taste like? It tasted gross! Well, she certainly put Adolf in his place. With an I, because it's a pun. Ha ha. And so, Mrs. Washington then took to the road in search of other films to be the best character in. Her impossible search continues. Oh, and I've watched to the end of this. That purple writing is nothing but lies. Okay, this is a hard film to sum up. It's slow, it would be ponderous if it had any thoughts. It's shot like slow art house, but about surf Nazis. It's no surprise that a lot of people love the concept of this film. The title, the trailer, and the score are all brilliant. But few people love the film itself. I mean, I like it. I really do. It's what might happen if you get Stanley Kubrick a lobotomy. How could I not like it? But even I don't love it. It's like they realized that most hilariously memorable cult classics tend to happen by accident. So they made it as seriously as possible in the hope that it would happen to them. And then it failed. If you want to get the most out of this, just watch the trailer or listen to the soundtrack. It's basically a lost John Carpenter score. Or just imagine your own plot. It'd probably be better. Poor Mrs. Washington. And not because of the sun thing. She badly deserved a better film to be awesome in. I'm Diamanda Hagen! And catchphrase ends.
Hello, my name is Diamanda Grace Jones Hagen, and I would like to talk to you today about minion starvation. This minion has not eaten in days and is currently grasping towards the camera because I've taped a sandwich to it. Oh, no, no! <laughs> can you help? No, not really. But what you can do is check our Patreon and help the economy of Afghanistan in doing many incredible and important things, such as buying a more expensive sandwich to tape to the camera. So please, join us in making this minion's life a little bit harder. <laughs>